All right, guys, let's go ahead and kick on over to the NFC West. Cardinals look to build around last year's first overall pick, Kyler Murray, while the Rams navigate this draft without a first-rounder, courtesy of Jalen Ramsey. Seahawks pick 27th, and the 49ers pick both 13th and 31st, thanks to the Colts trade for DeForest Buckner. Jay, the Cards hope to take a step forward with Kingsbury and Murray. How are they going to do that next week? Uh, we just talked about it. The uh, Rams, they about to take a step back, so they'll benefit from that. Uh, but, yeah, on a serious note, the, the Cardinals, uh, I think they could stand to get a little bit stronger at the uh, in the interior of their offensive line. Uh, that's not to say their tackles are great, but I think the need is more on the interior. I think DJ Humphreys and Marcus Gilbert, they're, they're serviceable. Uh, I'm thinking about Matt Hennessy out of Temple. I think he's a guy you could plug in at center and anchor that offensive line for you. Uh, I, I think the defensive tackle uh, what on the defensive line, I think they need to get stronger there as well. Uh, I think if the, if the Panthers uh, somehow trade out uh, of that number seven spot and that opens up Derek Brown, I think that's a no brainer. I think you get Derek Brown in there and uh, you let him take care of you uh, in the, on the interior of your defensive line. Or maybe if you can't get Derek Brown, maybe you think about Ross Blacklock, uh, Blacklock out of TCU. And then uh, I think that's secondary outside of Patrick Peterson. It's a little uh, it's a little concerning. Uh, I think safety is probably the bigger need. Uh, I would I would consider uh, Kayvon Wallace or uh, Terrell Burgess, Clemson and Utah, respectively. Got you muted, drink. Yeah, I can't. Hear can you hear me now? There you yeah. Are. Okay. I, I don't know. My computer did something weird. So. With that said, hey, I'm thinking Cliff Kingsbury going to live on the offense side of the ball. I think his first two uh, picks going to be probably offensive linemen. His prized possession is uh, Kyler Murray. He's going to protect Kyler Murray. He wants Kyler Murray to be able to get that ball out to that newly acquired wide receiver, DeAndre Hawkins. So I'm looking at maybe Jadry Wills getting uh, drafted with that first pick. Uh, you know, we talk about the four tackles, so any other four, good pick, don't matter. And then I'm looking at um, with that sec- with that third round pick, I should say, I'm looking at Calvin Throckmore coming out of Oregon. We we underlooked how good that offensive line was for uh, Justin Herbert down now. It was like four seniors and a junior, I think. Um, so that you know that was a very uh, veteran-laden offensive line. And then with that third pick, I'm looking at a, another wide receiver to, to uh, throw the ball to on. A, a, Listen, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Fitzgerald. Got it. He's there. He's one foot in, one foot out. You got DeAndre Hopkins. You need just another young guy, young guy on the other side of DeAndre Hopkins because you're going to be playing Larry Fitzgerald in the slot most likely. So I'm looking at a guy, Gabriel Davis, coming out of uh, UCL um, to compliment DeAndre Hopkins and Fitzgerald. So I'm looking at offensive tackle for the first two picks and then wide receiver for the third one. Yeah, uh, offensive tackle, again, struck me as a uh, – this is another spot that one would come off the board here. Either Willis or Wirfs makes the most sense. Um, Kyler Murray was sacked a boatload of times last year, and some of that is obviously that rookie decision-making. But the line had to had a, a big part in that, and some of the names they have were just underwhelming, you know. So I think that getting one of these premium talents at the eighth pick would make a lot of sense. But again, like, like Jay kind of alluded to, the wild card is if Derek Brown or Isaiah Simmons fall. A lot of drafts do have Brown here. But, you know, Simmons is the one that really interests me because the Cardinals defense allowed the most yards in the league last year. Uh, linebacker and edge kind of both stand out his needs. And Simmons, he can do both. I mean, he can he can not only anchor that linebacking core, but he can also drop back. He can rush. I mean, he can do everything. And there's some rumblings about the Giants. He'd be going for a tackle to protect Daniel Jones. And if quarterbacks go 5-6 and Brown goes 7, hey, as I say, Simmons at 8. And that, that scenario is not some complete off-the-wall, never-going-to-happen thing, right? So – as much as I would want to beef up my line, if I have this defense that's very porous and needs to be addressed in a lot of some positions, especially at linebacker, and this guy falls to me at eight, I would be remiss if I didn't go ahead and just pick him and then worry about offensive line in a deep draft class later on down the line. Because you can get an offensive lineman. You ain't getting no Isaiah Simmons in this draft. I promise you that. So it's probably the last time I'm going to gush over him for now. But, um, yeah, this is uh, a guy that – I mean, you just think about that defense and the fact that he could be just instant defense, just add water in this dude, you know. So that would be a hard press to think about uh, going forward. All right, Jenkins, move on to the Rams. They don't have any first-round picks. They got two second-round picks and kind of a mess. What do you got for them? 
kind of a mess. Oh my God, man! I I wouldn't be surprised if they try to argue with paying these rookies the full rookie rate. Hey, hey, hey! Hold on, we we, we got to pay you that. Like, oh my God, finances are terrible there. That's what you get when you get stuff on credit. You know, you got to actually pay for it. You know, lay away it only goes so far. It looks good in the front, get you on the back. That's what the Rams dealing with. Um, the, with the with the first position for the Rams, I'm looking at offensive guard. I see um. I'm thinking Solomon Kinley coming out of Georgia to fill in that inside hole. I don't know. that. I just don't know. I, I thought they took care of the offensive line a little bit in the draft last year, but it just didn't look right. Uh, Jared Goff, I, and it's, it's sad to say because as poor as, as he played, it wasn't all on him. The offensive line was atrocious, so I hope they can get that fixed with Solomon uh, Ken, Kinley. And then I'm looking at cornerback. Somebody uh, to play on the other side or Jalen Ramsey, if you pay him. If you don't pay him, I don't know. Um, I'm looking at Damian Arnett coming out of Ohio State for the, on the other side of him. And then also I'm looking at, come back to the offensive line, I'm looking at offensive tackle, uh, Trey Adams coming out of Washington. So the way I look at it is they're going to try to get some protection for the golf, get, get another guy on the other side of Jalen Ramsey. So... You know, they could try to build a train, the brain trust again and not take the Cardinals' place in, within the division. Yeah, uh, the Rams, yeah, this thing could, uh, they got a lot of needs uh, for a team that just uh, was in the Super Bowl two years ago. This thing could come crashing down pretty quickly, uh, especially when you take into consideration some of the investments they made. I, I still think uh, they're going to pay Todd Gurley a fair amount of money this season. Yeah, uh, and, and, with that, and with that in mind, I got running back as one of their big needs. Uh, Jerry Goff, uh, listen, he's, he's a nice player. He can make, he can, uh, he can make a lot of throws for you, but, uh, think about the last, when the Rams were at their height with Sean McVay doing stuff for you, uh, it was all set up courtesy of the running game with Todd Gurley. And with that in mind, uh, they don't have a first round pick, so they gotta, they gotta hope and pray to one of these, uh, one of these big time running back prospects maybe drops a little bit. Uh, so I'm thinking about DeAndre Swift. I'm thinking about JK Dobbins. Uh, th those would be guys I would be thinking about. Hopefully they fall for you. Uh, but yeah, cornerback, I agree with you on that. Uh, I got Trayvon Diggs down, but Arnett, anybody in that second round, I think there'll be some good value picks that you can get there. And it's a big need because yeah, I understand you got Jalen Ramsey in there, but you get, you traded Marcus Peters, a keep to leave. I don't know what happened to him, but he ain't playing for you. And, uh, Nikhil Roby Coleman, he left the building too. So a lot of turnover in that defensive backfield. And you got to – look, it's the modern-day NFL. You got you need three good corners out there to go ahead and uh, cover these spread-type offenses. And I think inside linebacker, that's another position that they're, that they're a little thin at. No Corey Littleton no more. He went off to Oakland. So uh, Logan Wilson, guy people may not be thinking about, played at Wyoming. But they're going to need some help at inside linebacker as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the mess they have is going to take more than two second-round picks to solve. Um, and from a needs perspective, it's funny, like you mentioned, like Jade's mentioned, drink you too, you know, running back, cornerback, linebacker, all they kind of sort of stand out when you just look at the roster and look at, okay, what would they need this year? But with the, calorie, the salary cap mess they're already in, if you're heading towards the darker days when Jalen Ramsey gets extended, um, they're going to have to start cutting money sooner than later. And so you have to start thinking about positions like tight end, left tackle, wide receiver. They look interesting because down the road, Maybe I can't afford a Robert Woods. Maybe I can't afford a Tyler Higby because I'm paying an Island Nation's GDP to golf Donald and Ramsey. So, like, if I'm thinking about this from the draft perspective, those are some of the positions I may think of this year. So in a year or two, I can start making some cuts. You know, another another one you could think of uh, tapping this deep offensive line class for Whitwood's departure is possible. You know, running back is still going to be smart. Regardless, if you can find a good one in the second round, which there'll be guys that'll be worth taking there, like Jay said, and there's some other guys, maybe Cam Akers falls, who knows? There'll be there'll be some premium guys in, there in the second round. Uh, maybe Zach Bond fits well from uh, Wisconsin, kind of an inside outside linebacker guy, can play a little bit of both positions in that defense. But yeah, they they've got to start thinking long term because this is about to be a pretty significant issue for them. All right, guys, we have the Seahawks up next. Jay, they have seven picks, including number 27. Russell Wilson getting some help. You know what? I, I certainly hope so. I, I, I hate to beat this dead horse, but uh, this offensive line, um, th they've neglected to protect this man for years. Um, I, I, I like that they brought in Dwayne Brown uh, a few years ago. Um, what do you run. know? 
what do you know? Uh, what do you know? Another good player, uh, Bill O'Brien, let go. May well, maybe that wasn't his call. Maybe that's unfair. But anyway, hey, uh, Dwayne Brown, he's about 34 years of age now. And uh, that right tackle spot, it ain't looking too good. So uh, Drake's been doubling it up uh, lately on positions. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I like to see him take two offensive tackles. Uh, I'm looking at three guys. Maybe you get a two for three special uh, with um, Josh, uh, Josh Jones, uh, Lucas Niang, Austin Jackson, two or three of them, and I'd be satisfied. And uh, I think edge rusher, that's a position they need to get um, solidified. Jadavion Clowney is still unsigned, probably still uh, wants way too much money for uh, three sacks per season. So maybe you look at uh, A.J. Epinesa or Yatir Gross uh, Matos out of Penn State. And then I think I, I like their uh, I like their starting safeties with Quandre Diggs and Bradley McDougal. But it uh, never hurts to have a third safety that you can plug in in your sub packages. And uh, I'm thinking about Brandon Jones out of Texas. I think he could be a guy that you could uh, utilize well in those situations. Oh, uh, yeah. So <clears throat> it's funny you say, hey, it's about time to give Russell Wilson some help. It's just like when they said, it's about time to run the ball on a one-yard line. And I say that to say this. Here's the deal. Hey, Pete Carroll, he wants to create that Legion of Boom one more time before he, he call it quits. So I see all three of the first picks going on the defense rather than the offense. I don't think he relatively give a rip about the offense, me personally. I mean, just look at the moves he made. If he give a rip, he sure don't look like it. I mean, he brought back Marshawn Lynch, for God's sakes. I mean, how much do you really care? So, look, I'm looking at uh, – you just you just brought up the safeties. I think one of those guys is going to be up out of here. I, don't, I, I can't tell you which one I think is going to be out of here. I think they take a strong look at Xavier McKinnon in the first round. Uh, get him back there, replacing one of those guys, whichever one that they feel not cutting the cheese or they won't be able to make a deal with in the future. Replace one of them. You slap in Xavier McKinnon. Defense in. You brought up Jadavis Clowney. Hey, you want to keep holding out? Hey, don't worry about it, Bucko. We're going to mess around here and maybe take Marlon Davidson in the first round and, and or the second round and, you know, we, we'll holler at you, player, because we ain't got time for this bull crap. I mean, you did come over and help us in that one prime time game, but outside of that, what else did you give us? So they, I'm I'm thinking they go and draft Marlon Davidson out of Auburn. And then, hey, cornerback is a need. Is all it is to it. We looked at those cornerbacks that they got there now. Decent, not great, and hey, Go out there and get you a Trayvon Diggs, the bottom of the second, maybe even the third, depending on how you look at it. He slides. So I'm looking at a, a safety, a defensive end, and a cornerback for the Seattle in his draft. Yeah, the, the trenches also jumped out to me as kind of their biggest needs. Again, we, we don't really compare notes too much in this, but we all kind of often find the same players in need. Um, Russell Wilson does kind of float your premier needs at skill positions. And the secondary is okay, but drinks, right? A corner could definitely be someone you got to look at later on. But up front, I think they're first going to probably watch to see which edge prospects fall down to them. This is going to be one of those things at 27. Again, you kind of watch to see who comes down. And if Gross Matos, Epinesa, or Chassis on any of them, or Chasing, any of them fall, they would fit well in kind of the system but again it's largely dependent on who goes where um gross matos might be the most um available of those but then if, if not the interior offensive line makes a lot of sense again like like jay mentioned josh jones austin jackson uh, maybe maybe cesar ruiz is still there you know any of those guys you could plug in and that offensive line because russell wilson does need some help for kind of oh this man is just it's, it's criminal what they do to him and make him put up with um <laughs> later on you, you can come back to whatever position you miss um you know, defensive line isn't as deep as offensive line, but you can still come back to it later on. And then maybe uh, you look at what's left of the highly rated wide receivers. You know, the second round, you can find a guy like that. Um, you know, some of the leftovers of this good class to fill a need there. All right, guys, 49ers are up last drink. They got 13 and 31. So what of our Super Bowl runner ups going after? Well, <clears throat> so I've been hearing a lot of chatter about me personally. I think they should take another wide receiver. Uh, you know, get another guy out there to uh, help Jim Garoppolo out. I think who it would help out more is George Kittle, to be honest. But get another get another guy that you can use in the same manner that you kind of use Deb, uh, Debo Samuels in. So with that said, I think Henry Ruggs would be that guy that you can use in that manner where you can throw short a lot of short passes. If You know, if you don't feel that Jim Garoppolo can get it done down the field, you could throw a short pass to this guy, and his speed just going to take it. He's going to give you five right off the rip skit. So I'm thinking wide receiver, Henry Ruggs, 
Then I'm looking at cornerback Cameron Dantzler out of Mississippi State. Uh, he jumps out to me at this present time that they'll be picking because you would think the the premium on cornerback would have been pressed by now. So those guys will be off the board. And then I'm looking at uh, safety as the third position. Uh, Aloha Gilman coming out of Notre Dame. And I just want to say this before I move on. Notre Dame sure do got a lot of good guys coming out in early rounds for this performance that Bill, Bill uh, Brian Kelly is putting up. Every time you play a big game, he gets smoked. And then he, I, I, I just want to throw that out there. Notre Dame is getting a real good pass over here, maybe even at a greater level than Iowa. But to stay on subject, yeah, my three guys was wide receiver, cornerback, and safety for the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, we haven't talked about uh a whole lot in depth about teams that will be uh, looking to make trades, but the 49ers have two first round picks and then they don't have a second, third or fourth. And they got, they acquired that second first round pick in the DeForest Buckner trade. That seems like a pick. It seems like pretty obvious that that would be a trade back and try to acquire some more picks. But I guess you never know. I mean, if they got a guy at 13, if they can get a, a guy they can think could be a superstar wide receiver, maybe you go ahead and take it and uh, just live with what you got. Uh, but I got them trading back, and I think uh, I look at offensive tackle. Uh, Joe Staley is still playing at a pretty high level, but uh, Clowney did give him the business last year. That was the one game we saw Clowney do some some real stuff for him. Uh, so I look at Joe Staley, and I think that it's time to maybe draft a potential replacement, grooming behind him, probably a developmental guy, because I think Staley can still give you one or two more fairly good years. I'm thinking about uh, Ben Barch out of St. John's. Uh, he's a developmental guy that, uh, it's going to take some time for him to get it uh, get it cooking, but I think uh, I think learning behind Staley for a year or two, I think that's something you could take a look at. And then um, the linebacker position, um, Quan Alexander, Fred Warner, they got some good guys, but I think they're in need of one more linebacker. And when I think about Alexander and Warner, uh, that's not to say they can't play against the run, but uh, especially Warner, I think he excels more in pass coverage. And I just think they need a little bit more uh, physicality and a guy that can really uh, stand up against the run. I'm thinking about Evan Weaver out of California. I think he'd fit in well there. And then uh, we've mentioned this guy from time to time and uh, that cornerback position. Uh, it's not as tight as you need as uh, Sammy Watkins uh, demonstrated in that Super Bowl running by good old Richard Sherman. So uh, Richard Sherman, he's still a valuable player in this league. He's still play, but um, – uh, who who was it? Who was the cornerback? Somebody was getting roasted at one point. It was it Emmanuel Mosley. Uh, oh, I think was it Mosley? I think it was Mosley. Um, it was, yeah, it was somebody it, getting beat pretty damn bad on. That I know. Side. I, I talked. Yeah, I talked about Sherman getting roasted, but there was one guy that was just getting roasted exclusively. So they they need some cornerback help. Uh, I'm thinking yeah. about Damon Arnett at Ohio State. They got they got to make that position a little better. Yeah, I kind of saw wide receiver would be their first choice, but Jay brings up a very good point about them only having the two first round picks and then a large t a chunk of time that most teams would go, eh, we maybe want to get some more in the middle there. You know, the, the trade up scenarios, again, you have to also have a team that wants to trade up. I would think that actually the Broncos might want to come up to 13 just to get the receiver they actually want. So that, that'd be one to watch on trade day or on draft day. But if not, you know, you have your pick of your Judys, your Lambs, your Rugs. I, I think, you know, any of those guys would be good picks uh, in the top of the round there. And then um, if they don't go there, then I think at corner, if they were to trade out anyway, I think corner at 31 is where they're going to want to go. Uh, again, Sherman has been really solid, surprisingly enough, but he, he's getting up there in age. And like you all said, the other side was just like a, a clown show for a while. Um, I, I like Mel Kuyper's pick of sending Auburn's Noah Abin Gagne. I think that's how you say that. Oh, sorry. Um, their way. He's possibly there at 31. He has tremendous athletic ability. He's a four-year starter. And not only would he contribute at cornerback, but he's also got some help on special teams as well. So you get a chance to let Sherman kind of spin him up a little bit. You get a big win there. And then if you don't get a wide receiver early or, you know, you come back in the second and third rounds, maybe uh, Michael Pittman Jr. from USC is there. A big guy with some speed limitations, but he was a big target for Garoppolo to uh, throw the ball to.